Okay, thanks for returning. We ended the last video with these two problems right here as a checkpoint, and there's the answers I got. Keeping my fingers crossed that you got the same and that I did not make a mistake. Okay, simplifying an expression with radicals. Simplifying an expression with radicals. Remember that this is all the algebra. This is the intense algebra that you are going to be doing after you find a derivative. So you're going to find a derivative, you're going to end up with something like this, and then you need to know what, what do I do with it. Because you can't just leave it the way it looks now because it's unsimplified. So the hardest part sometimes is simplifying your derivative to get the answer that looks much nicer, much more simplified, condensed, cleaner. So what do I have here? I have negative x times 2x over 2 times the square root of x squared plus 1 plus the square root of x squared plus 1 all over x squared plus, again, I've got 1 over binomial times the quantity 1 plus another fraction. So I'm going to handle, I'm going to handle this one like I did on the last problem. And the one on the left I'm going to try simplifying that right now because I see that these two twos cancel out. So I'm going to do that. So I've got negative x squared in the numerator. Negative x times x is x, negative x squared over the square root of x squared plus 1. Now the second fraction, which is anything over 1, right? I'm actually going to put the square root of x squared plus 1 over 1 so I can see that term as a fraction. And then don't forget this term right here. Okay? And you might want to put that one over as a fraction. So these are little, little pieces of information that might be helpful. Now I need to clear that fraction. Let's shrink this because I wrote entirely too large. I sometimes do that when I get nervous with my math. I just start writing really big. Okay, I'm going to multiply each term by square root of x squared plus 1, square root of x squared plus 1, square root of x squared plus 1. Can't leave any of the fractions out. None of the terms can be left out. You need to multiply every term by the same value. So these cancel, and I get negative x squared. A radical times itself is just the radicand, x squared plus 1 over x squared times the square root of x squared plus 1. Negative x squared plus x squared cancels out, so my answer is 1 over x squared times the square root of x squared plus 1. And it was daunting, but it's really not as bad as you think. Now, they will rationalize that denominator. So you might get this answer, but a better answer is the square root of x squared plus 1 over x squared times x squared plus 1. And I'm not even sure why I'm doing this as a final answer, because it's not a final answer, right? I still have, you get so darn tickled that you got the fraction on the right, you know, the one on the left, that now you got this thing on the right in blue that we haven't even addressed yet. So I've got the square root. So let's just keep this the way it is right here. Let's just keep this the way it is. Let's try not to simplify it. So this pink one on the left, let me write this in pink so that you can see what we just did. We've got 1 over x squared times the square root of x squared plus 1. Okay, I'm going to slow myself down a little bit so that you can follow. If you need to, see this is a plus sign, a plus sign, a plus sign. If you need to go back, rewind, make sure you know how I got that pink part on the left, go ahead and do that. Okay, on the right, let's start working in blue. We've got 1 over x plus the square root of x squared plus 1. This looks very familiar, and it looks familiar because we've already done this one. So if you peek at 
this problem in your notes. I think we've, have we already done this one somewhere? It seems so familiar. Well, let's look. It seems incredibly familiar. Two times the square root of x squared plus one, two times the square root of x squared plus one, so that I can get a common denominator, plus two x over two times the square root of x squared plus one. The twos can't, I don't want the twos to cancel. I want to factor out the two. I'm telling you, we already have an answer to this. And you're probably looking in your notes and you're like, you're right, we do have an answer to this. We're going to rewrite this over one denominator, right? These two numerators right here, this numerator and this numerator have a two in common, so I'm going to factor that out. Square root of x squared plus 1 plus x. And now, no, 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 these twos cancel out. The x plus the radical, the radical plus x, same thing. And we have got 1 over the square root of x squared plus 1. So what does this second fraction need? This second fraction needs an x squared. So now I've got x squared times the square root of x squared plus 1, and in the numerator I have 1 plus x squared. And there's nothing else we could do with that. Nothing else we could do with that. Right? Right. 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 I feel like I'm missing something now. Ah, oh, look at this. I can rationalize. Square root of x squared plus one. Square root of x squared plus one, right? Now I'm gonna have, I need more room. back down here. I'm going to copy and paste. Copy. Paste. So we're working right here on this right hand side here. I'm going to have 1 plus x squared times the square root of x squared plus 1, and in the denominator I've got x squared times x squared plus 1. Well look at this. This is 1 plus x squared, this is x squared plus 1, which is the same thing. So those cancel, and we get an extremely simple answer compared to what we started with, the square root of x squared plus 1 over x squared. So sometimes you have to look at things a little bit more closely and go, what can I do? Oh, I can rationalize that denominator because one plus x squared, and then that radical, x squared plus one, you know, something looks like it can be done there. So we end up rationalizing the denominator and it turns out to be a beautifully reduced square root of x squared plus one over x squared. Some of these problems will take you half a sheet of paper. Sometimes it might take you a whole sheet of paper. If you need to not fold your paper in half because you're using the width of the paper, that's what you gotta do, okay? Don't, don't try and conform and squeeze things in. See how I took the whole width? You might take the whole width as well. So we try to do you know half and half, but if you find that these things are, are pretty wide, do what you need to do, okay?